Well, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church right here in Hazlitt, Texas. It is Thursday, October the 27th. It's time for our daily devotion, and we are continuing in Matthew chapter 18 that we, where we left off yesterday. So if you would like to, please join me as we start in verse 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled his debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. And the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. All right, so um, a lot going on here in this, uh, in this passage. So we, we start off with Peter's question, and, and we can very much p- see that Peter's question runs in the realm of the law, right? He, he wants to know what's the most number of times that he needs to forgive someone um, in order to be pleasing to God. Now, we could flip this around and and we could say that that Peter is really asking, what is the minimum amount of self-effort that I have to do for God to still be happy with me? So, this very much is is not a question of the gospel. Peter is not um, inquiring about uh, being saved by grace through faith, where he understands that God's forgiveness is, is unlimited. But but he's asking what's the minimum that he has to do towards his brother in order to be acceptable to God. And so often this is a question that we ask when we are thinking about sinning or when we're thinking about, um, you know, getting back at someone. um, What can I get away with and, and still be considered a Christian? What can I do or or, or what can I what kind of justice can I bring myself and still be acceptable to God? You know, and it's really the wrong question for us to ask ourselves. We can see that through the answer of Jesus, um, this 70 times 7 is very much an answer to the gospel because that's such a large number that it's it's basically unlimited, the forgiveness that, that Jesus has, right? So Jesus' forgiveness exceeds any kind of moral arithmetic um, that, that you have the complete assurance of the forgiveness of your sins in Jesus without any self-effort on your part, okay? Now, we can see here in the story, the way that the story goes, uh, Jesus tells about, or he talks about uh, a servant who comes who has such an immeasurable amount of debt to be forgiven. I think it's 10,000 talents. There's no way he can pay this back. And, And he is forgiven by the master who is merciful, but then he goes and he finds someone who owes him like 100 denarii which is a significantly lesser sum, and he tries to exact um, payment from this person and has him put in jail and and all of these things. So basically what we're we're being led to see here is that there is no hoarding forgiveness just for yourself, that you don't come to God and just ask for forgiveness for all the sins you have committed, and you get that, and you think you're just going to keep that forgiveness to yourself, but you're going to be really um, petty about, everybody else who owes you something that, uh, you know, all your greater sins that were forgiven you, well, that's fine because that's for you, but now you're going to go get back everything that everybody else owes you, no matter how small it is. So the, the man in the story is not considerate of his neighbor, 
and he's not grateful to his master for the immeasurable amount of forgiveness that, that he has received, right? So the, the, the thing that we're being taught by here, here, taught here by Jesus, is to be mindful of what we have received from God in Christ and the forgiveness of our sins, to freely and sharely, uh, sharely, to freely and generously share that, that, um, that forgiveness because it's a reflection of the nature of Jesus who freely has given us that forgiveness. And, and then Jesus who pays for all of our sin and his blood, you know, he dispenses this forgiveness to us on Sundays in the divine service through word and sacrament. You know, some people say, well, why do I need to come to uh, the sacrament when I've already been forgiven all my sins in Christ? And well, I mean, this story kind of says it all that this 70 times 7, that we're always sinning, we're always in need of forgiveness, and we're always being offered forgiveness, being given forgiveness in the Lord's Supper, in the absolution in church on Sunday, and it very much reflects what's going on here, not just in Matthew chapter 18, but in, in all the other places, and it reflects how giving God is through Christ, that he has won these benefits for us, and that we're confident in these promises, we receive these promises, we rejoice in these promises, and we can't hear these promises enough. We cannot be thankful enough. We cannot be, uh, we cannot receive forgiveness enough, because it's the nature of God to give us these gifts, and um, He does this because He loves us and He wants us to receive these things for us to strengthen the relationship we have in Him, and to affirm the goodness of His character, the generosity of His His nature, and, and the blessings that flow between him to us and then to neighbor. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Amen. All right, so um, this coming Sunday is the celebration of the 505th anniversary of the Reformation. So hope you can be here. We have some special music planned. Uh, we're going to be talking about the um, original correspondence uh, between Luther and the bishop who was uh, dispensing these indulgences. And I think you'll find this history uh, to be enlightening. Uh, we normally have these conceptions about the Reformation and how it happened. There's more to it than what we have normally conceived of. So I invite you to come this Sunday. Join us for the message. Join us for Word and Sacrament Ministry here at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church in Hazlitt, Texas. And then the following Sunday, which uh, would normally be, or which will be um, All Saints Sunday, um, we also, uh, which which reminds me, if you know the name of a loved one that you would like to re have read during the service who has passed away in the past year, uh, then please get that um, that name of that person, that loved one, to me, and we'll we'll be sure to get that read during the service on uh, on Sunday, November the sixth. Um, this is also going to be an interpretive service. So our, our final two Sundays of the church year, November sixth and November twentieth we will be going through the explanation of the liturgy. So this is a really important service. You know, a lot of times you may have questions about why Lutherans worship this way, why we do things this way, why our worship doesn't look like a lot of other churches down here in the state of Texas. And this is going to be a time where you can get answers to those questions as we go through the elements of the liturgy and explain each one, where, why it's biblically based, why we do these things, um, when in history these things started, so uh, if you love history and you love theology, this is going to be a great service to attend. And we're doing two of them, one on November the 6th for the service of the Word, and then uh, two weeks later, one on November the 20th for the service of the sacrament. So please join us for those, uh, those two Sundays, and then not too far away, we have Advent coming up. So watch for some sign-up sheets going up soon to provide meals if you would like to donate your time to do that, and then midweek Advent services um, also. Thank you for watching our daily devotions today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can be um, always informed about when these devotions post. And um, we wish God's blessings to be upon you uh, for the rest of today. And Elizabeth will be here tomorrow for more daily devotions.